How's the Norton 901 stack up against the 890 Rally in terms of power and performance? Pretty sure I know a guy with a Dino, so let's find out. Typically when a new model comes out, a lot of questions arise. Does this new model make any more or less power than its competition? Which in this case would be either an 890 Rally or an 890R uh, from KTM. So usually with these things, when they first come out, you can pretty much predict that they're going to fuel about the same. Unless there's some new Euro standard or something like that where they have forced uh, KTM's hand to once again change the emission standards and subsequently the fueling on these things. So what we're gonna show you today is, does this Norton fuel any differently than the 890 Rally? Have they made any changes for this model compared to what KTM is doing? And will they show up uh, on the dyno? So today we're gonna to walk you through how we do that. We're gonna basically get air fuel ratios from the exhaust so we can see what the fueling is. We're also gonna to try to map out where closed loop is compared to open loop, compared to the 890 Rally, where no, we know where that is too, because you can basically see it go from very lean to very rich, and you can kind of start to map that out. So we're gonna show you guys today whether these two models between the Nord 901 and the 890 KTM, uh, whether they have any differences between the two in terms of fueling and power. So. Follow us, we're gonna walk you through some dyno stuff and hopefully this will be fun and enlightening. All right, everybody, we're pretty much ready to rock and roll with this thing. We've got our wideband O2s input in the exhaust system. We've got a Power Commander 5 that's basically mapping from the throttle position and the RPM. So it's tapped into the uh, throttle body here and it's also tapped into the crank reference sensor. So we're only using that to get that information into the software so we can data log those inputs. So we're only data logging throttle position, RPM, and then air fuel ratios and obviously speed and horsepower. So what we're gonna do is then compare all of that against the KTM 890 Rally. So we're gonna be doing it in fourth gear at 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100% throttle. We have not found these things to have gear dependent maps. So it doesn't matter if we do third, fourth, or fifth, it's basically throttle position and RPM that dictates where these bikes come out of closed loop and enter open loop. So we're gonna take all that data and show it to you guys in a minute, and we'll find out whether this guy makes more or less or the same horsepower as an 890 Rally, and then you guys can choose whichever bike you want. Okay, everybody, the results are in, and we're here with our DinoJet PowerCore software, and we're going to show you guys what we found with this 901 Norton compared to the 890 uh, Adventure. We did see some subtle differences that we're going to be showing you here today. That being said, we are comparing a 2022 Husky to a 2021 KTM. So for all we know, the 2022 KTM Adventure could be fueling similar to the Norton. We're not quite sure. Every year we see these things come out, we see them get leaner and leaner and leaner at higher throttle RPM ranges. So we're going to show you the trends that we're finding here uh, today. The other thing we're going to show you is that we do three runs of each, and we're going to be comparing all three runs of each bike so we can start to look and map. Uh, map out the trends. Uh, we don't like to just look at one because sometimes you get a, a little bit of an anomaly. So when you when you look at multiple runs over one another, you start to see the trends and it's easier to identify what the bike is doing, both in power and air fuel ratio and other things. So let's begin with the 901 Norden at 20% throttle and we'll compare that uh, to the 20% throttle on the 890 Rally. So what we're looking at here is 20% throttle on the 901 Norden, and we can see right here at 8,000 RPM, it comes very sharply out of closed loop and starts entering open loop. So basically where you want most bikes to be mapped is this red dotted line, which is 13.2 AFR, and you can see we're sitting at 
14.7. So the narrowband O2s do a very good job, run after run, of keeping everything at 14.7, and then they let it loose uh, right here at 8,000 RPM when it goes into open loop. So now we're gonna compare this to the 890 Rally. Okay, 20% throttle 890 Rally. We really don't see a whole lot of difference. Now we do see a slight bit more horsepower. These three runs right here, the green, the red, and the blue, or the 901 Norton, and uh, these three colors right here are the 890 Rally. Now, 20% throttle, you see fairly large differences. If we look at a triple graph, you'll see our throttle uh, positions here, and it's it's a bit tough to keep your throttle position exactly right on the money. But again, what you're looking at here is is really only 19 to 20 something uh, percent throttle. So we we didn't really change it much, uh, but we do see that this 901 Norton makes a bit more at 20% throttle. That being said. It could be a happier motor. Uh, we kind of, 20% uh, throttle runs tend to uh, be kind of all over the board regardless uh, between motorcycles. So what is interesting though, is that we can see right here that they've changed open loop right here. So the 901 Norden tends to stay a little bit leaner in open loop than the 890 Rally. 890 Rally gets a little bit richer. Now it really doesn't make much of a difference. And if you're past 8,000 RPM at 20% throttle, it's probably time to shift. So I'm not too particularly concerned about uh, this right here. So let's look at 40% throttle next. Okay, 40% throttle on 901 Norton, pretty much 14.7 across the board, all the way up till red line. So we think it's kind of interesting that at 20% throttle, you'd come out of a closed loop at 8,000 RPM and come into open loop. And then at 40% throttle, it pretty much stays in closed loop the whole way. So we're seeing this trend with newer bikes pretty much staying at 14.7 AFR at certain throttle, throttle ranges all the way till the rev limiter. So now let's look at the 890 Rally at 40% throttle. Okay, 890 Rally, pretty much same thing. 14.7 across the board all the way to red line. Now the Norden does tend to make a little bit more horsepower up top here, we're looking at uh, 34. These, you know, these arrows get a little bit confusing. They put them where they can, but uh, we're looking at 34, 33, 34, and 37, 36, and 37 for the 901 Norton. So a little bit of a separation there, but again, this might just be a happier motor. Um, so we're gonna, you know, wait till we see higher RPM ranges to really make a judgment here. But uh, we are seeing a little bit of a trend there, but exactly the same fueling. What we can't see is possible ignition advance. So maybe they tweak the ignition advance up a little bit. Typically you get better mileage with that and more power. Uh, so they may have tweaked it up just a little bit there. But uh, again, we have full control over that and fuel with a Power Commander 5. So we can bring all of these air fuel ratios right down to 13.2 with a piggyback Power Commander 5 and, and fix all this and make some good power. But that will be shown in a different video. So let's move on to 60% throttle. Uh, on the 901 Norton. Okay, 60% throttle, 901 Norton. We're pretty much, uh, again, 14.7 across the board, and you can see right around 7,000 RPM, it starts to slowly break out of closed loop and enter into open loop right here. So no big shockers here, but uh, let's have a look at the 890 Rally and, uh, and see how that looks. Okay, 890 Rally, same uh, trend with the AFRs right here, uh, breaking out of closed loop around 7,000 RPM. And again, same trends as other throttle ranges, it tends to get a little bit richer. So it looks like they're just leaning out the mixtures a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be hurting them because they're still making a little bit more power up top. So uh, right here, what we're looking at for the Norden is red, green, and blue. So red, green, but we have a blue kind of mingling down here. So, you know, once again, um, when we see differences in runs like these, sometimes the narrowband O2s, they'll start making adjustments to the map depending on, uh, you know, if there's any other third-party sensors that are having inputs on a three-dimensional map, such as temperature sensors and other things. So, you know, we're seeing uh, very similar trends, nothing to really write home about at any of these throttle ranges. So now we're going to move on to 80% throttle and 100% throttle. So let's look at 80 for the 901 Norton. Okay, 80% throttle uh, for the 901 Norton, where you can see 14.7 AFR across the board. And then we start to break out around five, five and a half thousand RPM. We start to break out of closed loop and start entering open loop. And you can see it kind of basically hovers down here in a much safer area. So these are higher throttle openings. And, uh, and so subsequently, they're allowed to come out of closed loop a little bit sooner because higher throttle openings tend, you know, you don't want to be running the bike so lean in there. So now let's compare this against the 890 Rally at 80% throttle. Okay, once again, some very interesting trends with the 890 
rally, uh, it looks like they break out of closed loop in a similar position. Uh, but again, the KTM goes for a richer mixture right here than the 901 Norden. Now, again, it doesn't seem to be hurting them because the 901 Norden is still making more power. You can see these trends up here. It's still making more power. So again, this could be from ignition advance. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, but the 890 Rally is a little bit has a little bit of a dip right here. So the Norden is going leaner, so better fuel mileage, especially with ignition advance, if that's in fact what they're doing. And they're actually making more power here. So once again, I have to mention, in all fairness, the 2022 890 Adventure might be exactly the same. If we ever get one of those in here, uh, we'll try to compare that as well. But this is what we're seeing between those two models. Now let's look at 100%, uh, our final and uh, most wide open run. Okay, 100% throttle on the 901 Norton. What's really interesting here is I'm used to seeing these bikes come out of closed loop somewhere around here and actually like getting pretty rich. And the 901 Norton stays fairly lean for wide open throttle through the RPM ranges all the way up to a red line, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, and so we can see the horsepower trends here. So let's go and compare this to the 890 Rally for 100% throttle. Okay, 100% throttle for the 890 Rally over the 901 Norton. So like I said, previous models, they, they dove out of closed loop and got fairly rich. And so these three lines here are the 890 Rally and these guys up here are the Norton. You can't really see a huge difference in power. All the trends tend to be running the same kind of wavy patterns here, but we can kind of go down the line here. So this is the second run for the 901 Norton. So it's actually quite low. Uh, this is the third run. And then we start getting into the 890 Rally where we're kind of all over the board here. So it looks like the 901 Norton has two runs that are um, on the top end. Oh, about three, three horsepower more than the KTM Rally. Again, uh, I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but it could be happy motor, could be ignition advances that they're doing. And it could be that the 2022 890 Rally is exactly the same as this. That's about all we have to report uh, between these two. It's uh, kind of interesting. It's not huge differences. You're seeing similar trends, but you can definitely see a trend of the newer bikes getting leaner and leaner and leaner at higher throttle openings. Um, and actually making the same amount of power. So they're getting better mileage and making better power. And so kudos to KTM for providing stock bikes that uh, are improving steadily. Now, that's not to say that we can't make a lot more power with an intake system and fully mapped Power Commander 5 on these bikes, which we'll be doing in another video. But for all intents and purposes, this video was about stock versus stock. So we hope this video has been enjoyable for you guys and educational. Please, please, please hit the subscribe button and uh, comment below if you have any questions about mapping. We're happy to ask them. We love the comments. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to get out there and ride. See you guys.